All City Network here at the winter meetings, Southern California, San Diego to be exact. We're not at the Manchester Grand Hyatt. We got something better. We've got what's called an Airbnb <laughs> because look, we don't have the kind of money that the Chicago Cubs, Cubs do. Uh, and, you know, we don't have the kind of money that Cody Bellinger does. $17.5 million one year deal. I know you've kind of already talked about it, but, but still in the wake of all of this, you got to be really happy with the job that Jed Hoyer's done. Yeah, so far, yeah. I mean, that is a signing that we've talked about on the CHGO Cub show, you know, kind of all off season of why that made sense. Like even before he was officially, you know, non tender it all, it all counted on him being non tendered by the Dodgers, <laughs> of course. Um, so we, even before that, we talked about like he was a candidate uh, and he made a lot of sense for this team. The team had the, you know, uh, based on like fan graphs, you know, different defensive metrics, uh, the worst defensive center field in all of baseball last Oof. year. Um, so they needed to shore that up quickly. And while we know that Cody Bellinger has struggled at the plate the last couple seasons um, immensely, uh, com especially compared when uh, to you know he was an MVP a uh, few like what, 2019, I believe, yeah. so it was his MVP year, and even a couple years before that was very very good at the plate. The last couple years hasn't, but we know he brings with him a very steady, solid, very good glove out in center field, and that's what the Cubs need. Um, that's one that was one of their biggest needs is just shoring up that center field defense. Because we all know how, you know, big, uh, we all know how big center field defense is up the middle in general, shortstop, second base, all that, all that defense is probably the most important positions on the, on the field for defensively for any team. Um, so to get, you know, we'll talk, I guess we'll talk about what the Cubs may do in the middle that's infield. Nice. Um, but to get a, a guy you can count on in center field defensively, that's a plus in my opinion. You know, Ryan Herrera, you know, he knows his stuff. I'm Patrick Lyons from DNVR. This is Jesse N. Freeman. From PHNX. Yeah, the Bellinger deal, quite nice. It almost sounds like I can't wear my Rafael Ortega jersey anymore in Chicago without people, you know, yelling something at me. You probably couldn't, <laughs> you may not have been able to wear it down the street um, this past season, like during, during the season as well. Right? It's probably going to be game worn too. Like, like, let's face it, I don't know if they sell that necessarily in the store. No. Uh, I don't know if they sell Louis Vuitton bags or Dior. I mean, that's the guy, you know, the, the Diamondbacks have been linked with a couple guys. Uh, some of the same ones as the Chicago Cubs. What's next for them? This is a one-year deal, so this almost doesn't even count towards their payroll when you think about, well, they just invested 17.5. It's a $1 million deal. Let's forget about that. Now let's get back to the next guy. Which one of Scott Boris's free agents is going to be the <laughs> next one off the board going to the Chicago Cubs? Carlos Correa? I don't, well, I want to say that I, it, it is kind of funny because, <laughs> um, you know, last week, maybe two weeks ago, I did a mailbag uh, yep. at allchgo.com. Um, one of the questions was just with uh, some of, not even the issues, but the, the uh, with Scott Boris clients in the past and negotiations kind of not going anywhere. Chris Bryant kind of chief among them uh, with the Cubs. Uh, will that hurt the Cubs' ability to sign Scott Boris clients, uh, you know, this offseason? And I said at the time, like, no, I don't think so. I think as long as the Cubs offer what Scott Boris wants his, cli and his yeah. clients want, then it doesn't matter. Money, and money speaks very loudly again, in these, money talks uh, in these after situations. All, and you saw it today. The Cubs, you know, reportedly signed Carl, uh, Cody Bellinger. Oh, I almost said a different name. Cody Bellinger <laughs> to a, to a one-year deal. Um, yeah, you mentioned Carlos Correa. I have been steadfast in saying if it's me, if I'm Jed Hoyer and, or anyone else in that front office, my number one is Carlos Correa. Um, but I don't know that, uh, that that's exactly where they're looking. Um, I, I, I don't know why I lean Xander Bogarts, but I'm kind of leaning that way at, at the moment. Like I feel like Xander Bogarts may be, if any Scott Boris Klein is going to sign with the Cubs, um, I, I, I get the feeling that it's going to be uh, Xander Bogarts going to the north side of Chicago. Is it possible that the Cubs, I feel like, I think I saw a report about this. Is it possible the Cubs could get two out of the three remaining shortstops? There was a a tweet uh, last night Insane. from uh, <laughs> Mark Feinstein of MLB.com uh, saying sources, basically saying sources uh, uh, have said that there is a scenario where they do get two of those last three wow. remaining shortstops. Obviously, in terms of how much it would cost, it would be more likely that Xander Bogarts and Danny Dan Swanson would be the, the pairing. Um, but in that sense, Xander, Xander Bogarts is, a, again, a, a Scott Boris client. 
So would Xander move to second base, third? Like, well, how do you how do you deal with that? Well, you know, we were at the we were at Scott Boris's media availability uh, earlier. <laughs> we, today. we heard about 10 10 percent of yeah, what he tried, said. <laughs> tried to try to catch as much as we could. But I do remember him saying that, you know, Xander Bogarts or there's no team that doesn't want Xander Bogarts to play short. Uh, that doesn't want him to play shortstop yet. Sure. That basically the negotiations they've had haven't included moving Xander Bogarts off shortstop now. I don't know if that's Scott Boris just kind of pushing his guy he did, the shortstop. So he but. did say toward the end of the press conference, which was very interesting today, he said that one of the, he was like talking about things that people value about Xander Bogarts. And he mentioned his ability to play second base and third base as well. Yeah. It was like, wait, didn't you just like, were you just talking well, about how he's like going to stick well, exactly. at shortstop? And well, and that goes back to, he also mentioned that, that when he said that nobody or no team, uh, you know, doesn't want him to play shortstop. He yeah. also said, you know, Xander Bogarts is kind of a team first guy. Like he's willing to do right. his best for the team. So right. in that sense, it feels like if the Cubs were to ask Xander Bogarts to move to second base or third base, and you know, whatever scenario ends up playing out, that it feels like he would be open to it. But I guess you never really know what's kind of, what's, what's actually going on in the in those negotiation rooms. It does it does almost make me think that, you know, again, Scott Boris, top of the industry as far as super agents go, I, I would say chief among all sports you know he's, he's the number yeah. one best at what he does that last year maybe he cracked the code maybe this was you know his idea he just needed one team to go and gobble up two players at the same position to, to have somewhat of a monopoly like think about mm -hmm. that like say you know what don't just have one have both because then that means there's one less for everybody else yep. that's going to be better for that that third client or that last guy that's out there now that Trey Turner's already off the board. So that, that could bode really well for Dansby Swanson. If you, you know, get creative and you got Correa and Bogarts or something, but you say now there's one less for the competition out there, depending on how you sell it. And so it, beca it could become a lot more attractive that yes, you are spending that money on two guys. Only one of them is going to actually play the position, but what's the impact to the rest of the league or the rest of your division? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's what, you know, I, I kind of had written about it uh, earlier today, actually, that, you know, Trey Turner going off the board as quickly as he did. Um, it might have an effect uh, on how quickly some of these other you know, how, or how quickly the rest of the shortstop market plays out. It also might not. It also might be that the guys say, OK, cool. And then, you know, just kind of go about their own pace through free agency. If the Cubs take two of those guys off the board. Then that then that gets makes a lot of teams desperate for you, know, you got yeah. one more right now they still got three those three are kind of feeling out their negotiations still you take two guys two of those guys off the board to the same team the other however many teams that are looking for a shortstop now they're like well we have to get that guy yeah otherwise yeah. the drop from number you know four with, with that fourth guy to the next one is pretty steep. Is there a drop off to from from Swanson to Angelton Simmons? Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. Um, as, <laughs> you know that as someone, yeah, someone that saw Angelton Simmons play uh, play this past season, there that that is a drop off. Jose Iglesias, another one of those guys that's out there. He he was fine for the Rockies, but you're right. That is uh, that's obviously a much bigger difference. So if again, nice little dream scenario, but you have a team there that can can potentially afford such luxuries. If you're going to get two more of Scott Boris's clients. Do you want them to be two more position players? Would you like for them no. to be, you know, pitchers? Uh, after Rodon, I think there's there's somewhat more of a drop off for the guys that are left with Verlander yeah. and Degrom already being off the market. Or you know, is, is it maybe in the more obvious answer get get Bogarts, let's say, and get Rodon or or some kind of combination of yeah. hitter and pitcher? If I again, if I'm in charge and I'm living in a perfect world, like I'm getting the two Carloses, I'm getting Carlos Correa, and I'm getting Carlos Rodon. <laughs> um, those would be the two guys I get. Um, but we, clearly I'm not in charge of the Cubs and clearly we don't ever live in a perfect world. Um, but yeah, but that's, that would be at the top of my wish list. Um, as far as like, if, if I'm going to go position player and pitcher and honestly, like just if, even if I'm not trying to go one and one, those would probably be the top two on my wish list. Um, the Cubs don't seem to be operating in that high end starting pitching market. So, uh, it feels like you can kind of cross Carlos Rodon off the list, but, um, you know, they have been connected to Kodai Senga a lot, Chris Bassett. Um, I think Taiwan Walker actually reportedly just went off the market uh, not too long ago, Phillies. but, uh, yeah, Phillies. uh, but Jamison Tyon, uh, I actually just saw something very recently that the Cubs may be making a push for him. I think cousin Ken Rosenthal, uh, tweeted that out. Um, so the Cubs maybe, you know, that, that's, that's the market of, sh of starting pitcher they're going in, um, but tying it back to Scott Boris clients. It doesn't seem like Carlos Rodon is going to be walking through that door, um, Brandon Nimmo is another name out there that, um, I don't see going to the North side of Chicago, especially now that 
you know, Cody Bellinger yeah, has been signed. Yeah. Uh, I believe Josh Bell is another Boris client uh, that could have fit in somewhere at first base. You know, there's a little bit of a, a, a need for first base. Um, he's off the board now. Um, so it comes down to kind of that Carlos Correa, Xander Bogarts uh, section of, of Scott Boris clients. And again, I'm, I'm going to go back. I know, I know we, we, the, the card had the Dior of defense, Carlos Correa. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I may have flipped since we started this and said Xander Bogarts may be the one that the Cubs actually locked down. You had Correa yesterday I as did. your guy. Cause right, you don't even lose the qualifying offer on that. Yeah. Um, w- which is nice. I mean, you yeah. talk about getting the two shortstops and moving one of them off again, what you could potentially even have a scenario of, mm-hmm. You know, it's signed Brandon Nimmo because he's your long-term solution. Bellinger's only for one year. You would think it would be some kind of reverse order of something like that, but you never know what Scott Boris is concocting. You, you mm-hmm. never know what's going to happen at the winter meetings. That's why you got to make sure you're following all of us at the All City Network at Ryan underscore A underscore Herrera at Jesse and Friedman and at Patrick D Lyons. Keep tuning in. We still got about 48 more hours of this craziness yep. here at All City Network.